Hey everyone, please listen to this important message that Henry has to share. Hello, my mama says bad words. So please make sure to wear your earmuffs for this week's episode. Finding the right jeans is hard. Accepting your jeans is even harder. Whether you wear boyfriend or boot cut, high rise or low rise, this podcast will teach you to love the jeans you are in. I'm Rachel. And I'm Tina. And we're going to use modern research to bust diet myths and get real about body after baby. We're going to take you on a journey of unpacking your old beliefs about food and weight so you can learn to nourish your body and raise body confident kids. So put your booty in a chair and let's talk mom jeans. Hey listeners, we are excited to tell you about this amazing brand we just discovered called Dia. Their philosophy is to design clothing for women that want great fashion and proper fit in sizes 14 plus. As you learn to embrace your mom jeans, check out Dia to find denim jeans and a complete outfit for your perfect fit. To help you feel fabulous in your mom bod, Dia is offering our listeners an exclusive savings. To get 30% off, head to dia.com, that's D-I-A.com, and use our code MOMGENES, M-O-M-G-E-N-E-S. You can try the clothes on in the comfort of your own home, keep what you love, and always get free shipping and returns. Finally, a brand that has your mom jeans in mind. Visit dia.com and use code MOMGENES to get 30% off your order. Dia is excited to work with us this season, so head to dia.com and use code MOMJEANS to receive 30% off your next Dia order. Okay, now to our episode. We are in a series called Your Story, where our guests will be sharing the story of healing their relationship with their body. Each person's story is unique to them, and we are humbled by their vulnerability and willingness to join us in this space. As a result, we will not be editing out as many numbers, specific behaviors, or details as we normally would. If anyone's story has details that trigger you due to your healing journey, please press pause and take care of yourself. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. So today we are chatting with Doobie Ferrer about how to channel positive thinking and challenge both familial and societal stereotypes. So often our discussions with clients and our friends, especially when we tell them what our podcast is all about, we hear them say, okay, that's nice. Like I want to be body positive, but how? So we love this conversation with Doobie because she gave us some great examples in her interview about redirecting negative thoughts and feedback into positive affirmations to gain confidence. So we thought we'd expand on her technique and offer a few more before we dive into her interview today. While body positivity is this trendy term nowadays, hashtag body posi, which we love but also get, it may seem overwhelming to try to learn to love your body. So we want to introduce you to a concept called body neutrality. Yes. In short, body neutrality is rooted in acknowledging what your body does, not how it appears. This is where we challenge you to try to have grace for your genetics and body story by acknowledging the strengths your body has as well as the experiences it has been through and move about the world in a way that brings you joy. That sounds nice. I like it. And I am excited to share with you guys my favorite analogy for this that I tell my clients all the time. Tell us. Basically, I try to say, view your body as your vehicle. So I love the quote, our bodies are vehicles for our souls, just one of my favorites. So here's the analogy. Basically devoting a smidgen of time towards caring for is necessary, but really it just needs to get your soul from point A to point B. So think about how we treat our cars. We fuel them, we get them checked out the mechanic, take them to the car wash, but mostly we use them for the journey they take us on. Our bodies are similar. We need to fuel them with food, stay on top of medical concerns, wash them, 
as much as possible as a mom, sleep and care for your body, but know that your emotional and mental well-being is way more important than the external vehicle. So having that as a priority is a great way to care for your body, but in a more neutral manner. Another skill is affirmations. We did a social media post on this recently. Check out at Mom Jeans the podcast on Instagram to show how to post body positive quotes on your mirrors to help you catch that negative internal dialogue and swap it to positive. It takes a great unlearning and relearning to help us find body positivity. So surrounding yourself with affirmations, whether that's positive or just neutral statements, watching who you follow on social media, reading books that educate you on the systemic oppression that fuels diet culture, and being mindful of your conversations are all tools towards helping with the relearning process. If you find your biggest obstacle in finding body positivity is feeling you or your body doesn't deserve that, then finding help from a therapist and dietitian can help you with uncovering the roots of your self-worth. And for those of you who need some science to really believe us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> According to Johns Hopkins, research shows that having a positive outlook can decrease risk for cardiovascular disease, reduce blood pressure, and reduce your heart rate in stressful situations. So really, the power of positive thinking is mental and physical. So it is especially helpful when it comes to the physical care of your body when trying to heal from disordered eating or a negative body image. And because we know that even if you were to do this work on your own, we live in a culture that is glorifying dieting and restrictive behaviors, is fat phobic, and does not accept all people and bodies. Challenging societal messages is harder than challenging personal ones because the diet industry has its claws in so many businesses. We like this study done by the Mental Health Foundation, which highlighted four areas where action is needed to support positive body image and promote mental health. And when looking at these, we realize that Doobie's story inadvertently covers a few of these, which is cool to see. Those four things are, one, effective regulation of how body image is portrayed. Two, the need for commitment from social media companies to play a key role in promoting body kindness. Three, taking a public health approach to body image by training frontline health and education staff. And four, individually being more aware of how we can take care of ourselves and others in relation to body image. As you listen, look for the ways that Doobie's story inadvertently covers a few of these, particularly how body sizes are portrayed in the mainstream media and its impact on those who have witnessed her modeling campaigns, how social media images and company ad campaigns can help promote body positivity, how the medical field and those working in the field are starting to have conversations that are more inclusive to health and weight, and how she has learned to take care of herself in relation to her body image. Yeah, body positivity is personal and societal, and we hope that as you listen to this week's episode, you're able to take away a few nuggets of wisdom to help you in your journey. Before we dive in, we want to introduce you all to Doobie May Ferrer, a licensed vocational nurse, single mom, and plus-size model. She has done numerous body-positive campaigns for Swimsuits for All, Airy, Third Love, and more. She's also proudly been featured in Times Square, all, Times Square with all the lights, crazy, Forbes, Teen Vogue, and Cosmo Magazine for showing off how real bodies should look belly, birthmarks, and all. Let's get to our interview now. All right. Well, welcome to our episode this week. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. We, we are going to jump right in and catch you off guard a little bit and ask you what is a fun fact about yourself oh this was off the radar oh gosh <laughs> um Surprise. fun fact well um oh my gosh <laughs> I love how every person reacts so differently but most often it's like internally I hate you why are you doing this to me exactly you're like oh my gosh should I make it rated r pg-13 uh whatever we have a swear disclaimer don't worry about it oh, yeah I know I did hear that <laughs> okay so well fun fact uh I think everybody on my social media knows that I love boba 
Mm. almost borderline obsessed i don't know if you guys have it there in texas but i can't i i don't like the balls <laughs> i swear to god right. <laughs> i think that's the right version but um i can't no, the balls are so chewy i know I you know you know what it is it's because the actual balls in the drink the drink itself because you mix it in so many different ways and then you just add that thing like gum you know but in a drink so you enjoy it you you like have conversations with it and it's just I don't know I just have this thing about saying yeah well I don't even like gum so that's probably uh, why. Mm -hmm. okay yeah okay okay but fun fact I love boba Boba, huh? Maybe I should go try boba. You're you're selling boba. Give it a second chance. Maybe. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sweet. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Yeah. We're thank you for letting us torture you for the first two minutes of this. I know. Like, I had swear, to shake it out for a little is... bit. <laughs> Anyways, I didn't. All right. Yeah. Well, so this part you you do know about because it's all about you. And so there's nothing to prepare. But we uh, want to kick things off with you telling us uh, your story about healing your body. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I started um, like early in my life with the healing, quote unquote, because I grew up overweight and, um, you know, that comes along with different childhood experiences with, you know, whatever you, you think of, like being bullied, being called names. So my mom was really adamant about not being focused on, you know, the things that the kids were saying. She was more focused on telling me, like, yeah, you may be a little bit bigger than other kids, but your hair is like nice and long and pretty and healthy or your eyes are beautiful or your skin is, you know, a, such a beautiful color, you know? And um, I think growing up, every time I would come across like a negative comment or a situation with maybe uh, about my body, I would automatically find something that was positive about myself, you know? So that came early on, but um, as opposed to understanding how to really heal my body, um, you know, it came with me becoming a nurse and understanding why, why my genes made me this body shape. And um, also with doing plus size modeling, I met so many people in different sizes that I just, you just have a bigger understanding of you know, why people are shaped the way they are. And it's just, you know, it's actually a beautiful thing versus always being something negative that, you know, you look different than someone else next to you. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, the big um, outlook of my <laughs> body uh, journey. So yeah, it sounds like your mom was really helpful in teaching you a quick skill, coping skill right off the bat there, which is really cool. Yeah. But I am curious, what was it like growing up in a bigger body? And if and your body story was impacted at all due to your nationality or your race or culture or where you lived? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, um, like I said, I always got picked on. I I even remember like being chased down the neighborhood and on my bike and like they would call me Miss Piggy and just, you know, like just anything to just get under my skin, you know, but, um, you know, the ones that were harshest probably for me were my family or relatives because in our culture, um, I'm Filipino, their body structures are a bit smaller in the Philippines and, you know, like their food portions are small and, um, it just, it just was obvious that I did not look like other people in my family. So, um, it was, it was really difficult to, um, how do you say this, find myself similar with others. So it was hard for me to identify and I was really conscious on what I ate, even though we all enjoyed eating, you know, and it's like, I, I had to um, deal with that growing up, but you know, all those experiences led to 
me today and it led to my strength so I mean it, at the at that moment I felt really you know I was really traumatized maybe with some of the experiences but today I'm like I'm thankful mm -hmm. yeah. you know I know a lot of times so. I talk with clients where in specific cultures, they're like, I can't really set boundaries with my family. Like they yes. are going to comment on my body because that is the norm. And for me to set that healthy boundary, that's saying like, auntie, don't say this about my body. Yes. Like, oh, she's going to smack me upside the head and be like, shut <laughs> yes. up. I'm going to say whatever I want. Right. Like yes. respect your elders. Yes. So I think yes. for the, in a lot of our podcast episodes, we talk about setting your limits and boundaries and encouraging body positivity. So I don't know if that's what it was like in your family. So what would you suggest to listeners? It was even harder because, you know, Filipinos, they're all nurses. <laughs> so they would bring up the health issues and say, you have to lose weight now. You have to watch what you're eating now. You know, it's going to be harder for you when you're older and you don't, like sometimes you'll hear things like you won't find a boyfriend if you don't lose weight or things like that. So it is harsh. So now when I talk to my family, because I'm older, I do um, set boundaries when I do hear something and I tell them all the stuff that I am doing that is body positive. Like I tell them, Hey, you know what? Like it's 2020, like everybody is accepting the way you come, you know, regardless if you're bigger than that girl on the magazine, you know, so they're, they're, they're very accepting of me now. In fact, it's like a unique feature of me that I embrace and they embrace also. So they, they awesome. become, yeah, they kind of evolved with me. That's good. Their yeah. story has changed a little bit as well. Yay. Yes, 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 yes. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, you bring up an interesting point about the vocation of a nurse or a doctor being in the medical field, which tends to be very fat phobic and a lot of weight stigma. And then growing up with family members in the healthcare field. So I'm curious how you've held on to your career and navigated that while also now doing the plus size modeling and how did you get into that because to me that's very interesting to have both of those pieces right right well I mean uh you know yes being in the healthcare field we talk about health we talk about taking care of your food intake and you know your exercise and things like that um but I've it's actually a plus because I am able to explain people that criticize or don't understand that we all have different uh, genes. We all have different mix of ourselves. It's actually a plus for me because I can explain to people like I do understand and we are all in this journey and it's an ongoing journey. This is not my ending. Like I kind of use that to an advantage. Um, as far as getting into my plus size modeling, um, my sister is actually... Uh, she's very involved in the Hollywood industry. So she would always tell me, you know, like, um, you are good at um, taking pictures and you're not shy. She's seen a few um, plus size um, auditions. She's like, you should plus size uh, modeling auditions. She's like, you should definitely take yourself and try it out. Maybe, you know, you can um, be a good example for others that are probably in the same situation as you. So I went to an audition for um, a brand called Swimsuits for All. So oh, yeah, I love that brand. Oh, yeah, they're so cute, right? Yeah, so she, uh, Gabby Fresh, uh, she made a collection on there and she had a casting call. She only casted, um, I think it's five girls. Wow. Five, five, yeah, five girls. And I was one of them out of probably like, 500 women that came to <laughs> auditions so from then on it just was like one after the other and then you know you just get comfortable in front of the camera and in front of people we were on like KTLA we were on Teen Vogue we were on um, features in a lot of things so I so are you still a nurse I still am like today I you work do both I do both <laughs> Oh my, I know. No, sorry, my hair is like just up because I, I, you know, I came from work and then I had to like scrub all 
the germies and viruses off. <laughs> Uh-huh. Then hop yeah. on here, so that's right. You're an infectious disease nurse. Yeah, I help you... I help assist with um infection disease as well. And uh to the, so this whole COVID thing has been Oh my gosh. Thank you for working <laughs> and protecting us all. Aww, all the course, work that you course. do. Yes. You're um, welcome. Okay. I'm gonna shift gears. Is that okay? Sure. Yeah, yeah no okay. Way. All right. So we're moving into the mom part of it. Awesome. My okay. <laughs> yay. Yay. Uh, so as a single working mom that it sounds like you're very busy with multiple careers, how do you find time to nourish yourself physically and emotionally? Well, um, I am single mom. Uh, uh, by God's grace, my son's father is still involved. So he goes there on scheduled days. So when he goes there, I schedule my nourishments so meaning when he goes to his dad I schedule out you know whatever I need my nails done my hair done a date uh like you know anything that will just make sure that I am complete in my <laughs> myself because it's hard you I'm sure for you ladies know that we gotta find time even if they fall asleep you know that's another time that I <laughs> I'm able to fit things in so yeah it's funny so I'm not a single mom but my husband travels for a living and right now he's in Ojai um, doing a job and he's going to be there for another three weeks and it just is like at points I'm like I feel you know this is what single moms feel like except there's no end I'm not like feel hey like. when are you coming back but um, you do <laughs> right. have to schedule in that time because if not, you can run yourself dry. And there'll be points where I'm like driving in the car and I'm like, I've been sitting in silence for 40 minutes. What's, where did the time just go? But that felt really good. Maybe I should do this more often. <laughs> good. Yeah. Oh, it's hard. A hundred percent. And it, it takes a village, you know, I, I, I luckily have so supportive family members so my sisters they know my situation and if I need help with watching my son or just need that breather they will give it to me so you know it takes a village but <laughs> that's awesome I feel like we need to go back to like the olden days like the red tent days where all the moms were just all <laughs> breastfeeding each other's babies and you would just like pass it off and like who's on shift today oh they just 400 children <laughs> just go over into that field exactly. over there. <laughs> Deep teamwork. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So through your journey, which started in childhood and includes multiple different layers and pieces, what has been the biggest why for you for healing your relationship with your body or finding that body piece? Well, I think more so when I was younger, that why was a little bit superficial. I'm not going to lie. It's more so... To be honest, it's more so like to look good for your friends or a boyfriend or, you know, for, um, you know, I did a little bit of um, entertainment like dancing and singing. So I had to um, pressure myself to always uh, look good or up to par, even though I was heavier set. I felt like I had to make up for that by, you know, making sure that my face looked good or my hair was on that, like the new style. But um obviously, you know, you get older and you, especially having my son, that is my why, you know, my, that is my ultimate why. And if that includes taking care of myself, then that's what I did. You know, that's what I, where I uh, look to is just taking care of myself so I can make better decisions. And my son can see, you know, when he's older that, you know, I did my best as a human being to, you know, <laughs> just be a good uh, role model. And I think so. you bring up a really good point where teens, they're, they're insecure. That's normal. And so I yes. think in these like developmental years where they're really trying to find their true identity, the external is a common focus. And yes. so yeah. I think with what you're saying of like, well, but... I was trying to respect my body and noticing that, hey, wait, I'm I, whatever that difference is. 
that okay wait I'm gonna I'm gonna make fun hair choices or I think we all maybe went through that a little bit there was points where I wore tighter pants so the boys would look at my booty or I would like dye my hair and be like "Ooh, cool aren't I neat like me be my friend and I think that those are all normal behaviors but I right it's like when it shifts into now I'm actually harming my body I'm harming myself that's the difference where I think it's like "Ooh, we need to pull back a little bit right and and it sounds like for you it was really just kind of fun stuff Exactly. And it, I, I enjoyed being um, unique. So I would always find things and roll with it. So if I felt kind of like conscious about a certain thing, then I would find something else to like make up for it. And, you know, so that I feel good. And that's, I feel like something I definitely will teach my son, you know, anything, anytime he feels like he's lacking, then, you know, then he can find something that will hopefully make him feel better about himself. I think it's tricky. You know, you're talking about, okay, you've been through this body acceptance journey. You also work in the healthcare industry, which I'm sure it's like so many weight centric people yes. you're surrounded by. It just is like, you're probably inundated with it all day long where it's like, oh, this person talking about this new diet and this person yeah. doing that. It just is like, oh my goodness. Right. So in in all of that, What's the greatest lesson that you've learned in your journey and still while being exposed to this weight centric dialogue, probably constant? Most definitely. My motto is just also being confident, you know, it's just, uh, you know, you you're like I said, you're in this journey, but you also got to make sure that you stay confident regardless of what um, negative thing you might hear. So if it's about your weight and you know that you're overweight, you just know that you have to listen to your body and be confident and just, you know, always remember that you're going to try to do better. Because I think um, with having to, um, you know, learn uh, to accept, you just have to like, make sure that you are not mean, mean, like mean talking to yourself also. Yeah. And so that's what I find. Um, I have to tell myself like, stop it, Dewey. <laughs> Don't say that to yourself. You're okay. Like, yes, I, you people might be looking at you right now in a certain type of way because you're wearing like a small baby bathing suit, but then you have to also remember that it doesn't matter what they think. And as long as you feel good in the mirror, you know, as long as you feel yeah. good. Yeah. I think there's one word that, that it, you've brought up two times and I want to reframe because I want listeners to shift it, which is the word overweight. Right. And so what I believe is that you actually are not overweight because over what weight? Over what weight of what? Exactly. You know, our health care and this so stupid BMI developed by good old Lamby. Lamby. We nicknamed him. You know, it. it is not a marker of where we're supposed to be. And so if we're riding on this train of what you're saying, which is, hey, this is based off of my genes. I am where I am because of my genes. There's no weight that you're over. Your weight is your weight. That is your body. And it is exactly where your body is resting. And so it's it's the perfect space. Exactly. Right? It is just your body. So exactly. If that, if you want to identify as okay, as a kid, I was living in a larger body or a body bigger than whatever, or just I was living in a body. But I always reframe the overweight because it is it is stigmatizing the feeling that your body then is wrong. You're right. right. And You're right. And that's yeah. not that isn't the case. The case. Correct. Yeah, exactly. And the, I mean, and that's the thing. That's the sad part is like I heard that word over and over so to me I, luckily you know we have um you you know that you know you have identified that that's not the right term to use for me I've identified it as something normal growing up 
you know so it's it's great that we have to let people know you're right that overweight is not the correct term to use <laughs> thank you for that right it is your normalized term yeah but i wanted listeners to realize what you're actually saying is just something that is correct. normalized yeah. for you i was just thinking it, it when well, you talk a lot about like corrective experiences or corrective affirmations and i think that's a really good point for people to hear because a lot of times people are like okay yeah body acceptance but like how do i do that so i like how you've given us a few examples of catching those negative thoughts even telling yourself to stop i tell people to picture stop sign like slam on the brakes picture the stop sign and if you can you turn please you turn at the next slide <laughs> um, yes. or or the positive affirmations of you know what I'm not feeling body positive but I'm gonna focus on something else and just not let that piece kind of get get to me today um, or even affirmations on the mirror as a reminder and I think you provided some really fun little tips for people there and my guess too is that you've learned even more body acceptance by doing the modeling because I mean, talk about vulnerability being in a bathing suit from a bunch of photographers and then on a billboard in Times Square like I'm just I'm wondering how you how that helped take you to even another level of of body acceptance um, I'm just curious if you have any tips in in that area because I know a lot of moms will say like I don't even want to get in the pictures and now you're going I not only am I in the pictures, I'm in the magazines. So just wondering if you could speak on that at all. You know, I, I was listening to another um, uh, episode on your podcast and you guys said, you know, wear that bathing suit. And that's exactly what I agree with. Go ahead and wear that bathing suit. Go ahead and wear the short sleeve shirts because when, especially when I did that, um, it was uh, for Aerie. Uh, they featured us on um, Times Square. Um, I had my picture up there just in a bra and panty. And I would have never imagined myself <laughs> in the middle of New York Times Square with just a bra and panty, but it was up there. And um, I got so many messages uh, regarding it. And like, thank yous and inspirational like just messages about how you know it's nice to see someone like me up there and not just you know the commercialized model you know modeling these bras and panties so um you know uh yeah I and then it's like some of them would even tell me I don't feel like wearing a short sleeve shirt because I don't want, you know, my arms to show because I'm insecure about it or I don't want, like, after, after I think I talked to them, I, I think I looked on some of their social medias and they started wearing, you know, the short sleeve shirts or the crop top. And I'm like, oh, that's why, that's why I do that, you know? even if I'm tired from these long nursing hours or <laughs> taking care of my son, like it's so worth it. So, yeah. yeah. I think it's <clears throat> in my work that I do with clients and just even like friends and family, it's going based off of what you're sharing, which is the confidence. And we're not saying necessarily that right off the bat it's like yes I feel confident okay I'm just feeling confident no but it is the positive affirmations it is engaging in the action so that eventually you can build that perspective and shift that relationship so that eventually you can feel comfortable or confident enough to wear the sleeveless tops or the crop top or take pictures in your swimsuit or bra and panties or whatever you want to do that it does come with shifting that perspective so so often we engage in this dialogue that is negative that is critical that is along the lines of what society is telling us is the right way which we know is not because it's not actually normal or reality so if we can just Speak in even a neutral tone. If you're not having a great day, hey, self, what's going on? What do you need today? Or I'm not really feeling comfortable wearing these jeans. Okay, fine. What would you feel comfortable wearing? I think it's coming from that angle of more of a neutral space to then shift to that 
confident, positive space is really where the work is to be done to help us get to the space that you're talking about. And then additionally, yes, we need more imagery that are different bodies. I, yes, I reek of privilege. I am a white woman. I am straight sized. I am cisgendered. It like, I get it. And also at the same time, I'm tired of looking at people like that. I want to see belly rolls and curves and different races and cultures and like, just please, if anyone is listening, stop putting straight size white women as our main source of outlet. It's just really annoying. So I love that you're getting those messages and, and inspiring people because it is what we need to see more of. So thanks for being vulnerable to wear your panties in <laughs> So that it can be posted. Anytime. Anytime. Well, it's true. I'm sure I'm sure a teen walking down Times Square during that time period that that was up there thought, oh, that person's beautiful and celebrated and I look like her. Like how cool that was for them. So I think your vulnerability is giving such a gift to a whole other generation of people. Yeah. And thank you. Older, younger, everyone. Right. Well, how normalized is that when you're looking at a picture and you're going, oh my gosh, I could literally see her belly roll. Or she's just standing up and has right. a belly pooch. The fupa. Like, <laughs> heck yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah. It normalizes that it's like, oh wait. It is normal to have that. It's abnormal to not. That's what we need to shift our minds to, that it is abnormal to not have these belly rolls, to not have jiggly arms, to not have a butt. Yes. Right? That that is the abnormal. (laughs) All right. So here's our last question for you. What message do you want to share to the moms listening who are – listening to these stories because they're navigating their journey of healing their body image and their even disordered eating habits. Like what message do you want to share with the moms listening or parents listening? Um, Well, I just want to let them know they're human. They're going to be on this journey with their body. And while you're on this journey, just truly, truly, truly love yourself and every part of it. And, you know, being a mom to tie it together, you know, your kids are going to love you regardless. My son, he, he's normalized. Like he knows he's pats my belly and he says, you know, mommy, and, uh, he, he's not going to love me any less, you know? So, um, you know, just be you and keep doing you don't wear the you know, don't wear the insecurities on your shoulder or write it on your face, you know, just be your unique self and then accept yourself, shift your mindset and, um, and it'll be a lot easier, you know? Yeah. Where can listeners find you if they want more? Well, uh, on Instagram, they can find me at uh, Doobie May. It's D-U-B-H-E-M-A-Y. So they can definitely find me and all my body positivity campaigns and photo shoots and underwear and bra photos. (laughs) It's all on there. So feel free to check in. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for chatting today. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. We hope you felt inspired and moved by this week's story. Please reach out to the person interviewed to connect with them in the ways they listed, or you can check out our social media pages at Mom Jeans the podcast for details on the episode and to find our guest's information. If you love the episode, please leave us a rating and review us on iTunes and recommend this episode to a friend. We are sending you the inner strength to accept your jeans with a G and wear the jeans with a J. Bye. This episode of Mom Jeans was produced and edited by Rachel Coleman and Tina LaBoy. Just a reminder, this episode is not a substitute for therapeutic counsel or nutrition advice. Thank you to Jerry DePizzo for the music production. 
You can find episode information and show notes at www.momjeansthepodcast.com. Follow us on Instagram at momjeansthepodcast and join the Mom Jeans the Podcast Facebook group to find a community of mamas learning to love their bodies and discussing the episodes. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Mom Jeans. See you next time.